Provo, Utah. This is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiz. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to part two of Final Fantasy X's review. I am Caleb. And I am Joe. Oh. And this is kind of weird because we're doing it's... it on the same day. So, <laughs> I, uh, so doing like, the transition is odd to you? Yeah, it's like we've done it like five times. We've introduced ourselves like so many times today. That's true. It's very true. All right. So just as a reminder, make sure you support us on Patreon, yada, yada, yada. You get the episodes a day or a week early on some of these reviews. Uh, yeah, like a week one. or so. <laughs> I also got to remind you, since we are a week into Final Fantasy XI, please, if you can or uh, if you want to, <laughs> yeah, please join us uh, on our playthroughs. We will be there every single night, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, playing Final Fantasy XI at 9 o'clock and uh, plus whenever else we decide to play it. Yeah, the other days are kind of up for up for grabs as far yep. as when we'll get on, if we will. So, <laughs> All right, Caleb, so we're going to talk about gameplay? Let's do it. All right, give me one second to do the fade. I'm practicing this here. So the first thing we brought up last episode was about the Sphere Grid, the new level up system for Final Fantasy X. Right. The only other Final Fantasy game I feel that uh, goes away from the regular level up system where, uh, I mean, before X was probably Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. All the others have been regular level up systems. I don't know. Eight had some semblance of a regular level up system that's too. True, you did that's level true. up you're and right, gain stats, right, right. but the true way to level up <laughs> was to cheat and get a ton of awesome stuff instead. That's right. So I'm wondering, Caleb, how you felt about the sphere grid level system. Well, I mean, until I decided to get the trophy to fill the damn thing, I enjoyed it. Uh, I kind of like the, the I don't know, the sort of customization that it brought. I mean, once you fill out, your, I mean, obviously your character has a certain path that's kind of predestined, uh, preset for them to follow as far as when you get level spheres to kind of pull out of certain areas and venture onto other characters' sphere grids. But So in that way, it's kind of like the original leveling up where your character has a certain stat that he's going to have at a certain time mm -hmm. just based on levels so you can become bigger and badder earlier but it also starts to get harder because your ap drops off mm -hmm. but i did i i think the sphere grade's pretty cool i like being able to unlock certain portions and kind of take titus over to oron's side and become a little bit godly by the end of the game i think that's a really cool level system and you can kind of tailor your team to where you don't necessarily need Lulu as the black mage. You can just right. give it to Titus, you know, right. or whatever, vice versa. Tons however you of want customization to using it. Yeah, totally. However, very time consuming. Yes, very time consuming, especially if you try to fill the thing. Yeah. Not just time consuming there, but also uh, it by itself is a time consuming process. Oh, very much so. I mean, there's so many nodes, and there's so many empty ones. I noticed when I <laughs> had to run through to get the primers for that trophy, uh, there's so many empty spots in that thing, and I'm like, ah, I just want more power. I want more HP, but I got to level up even more to get past these empties. All right, so we got a question here from Gammon Stark. Uh, one of the questions, which I did find in a lonely thread, yes, says Gammon, was where did you each take... Uh, character, your character, your character is first. When you broke out of the sphere grid, did you suffer? And then he has a second question, which we'll get to a little later. Where did you take him first? Um, I took Titus to Oren's side. Mm -hmm. 
And then I think I took, uh, let's see, Oron to Titus's, but then I kind of broke off and hit Waka's side up too so I can get a speed. Mm -hmm. And basically I was able to hit flying creatures with Oron, so it was awesome. Yeah. That's exactly what I did with those three characters, and those were basically my main party. Yeah. Um, Was just take Titus and Waka down to Oron's side, Oron's to Titus' side, and then eventually to Waka's side. Yeah, it's you're unstoppable. I mean, you've got such brute force <laughs> that nothing stands in your way. Nothing, man. And they get a lot of good like armor breaking abilities and all that other stuff. I will say, I did this uh, this playthrough. I kind of camped out Riku, kind of near Yuna's side. There was like a level three that I needed, and Ultima was like right on the other side of it. So she had like thirty something sphere levels, just kind of camping that out <laughs> until I got to Xanarkand. And grabbed, killed one of those uh, Defender Z guys, the big machine guys. Mm-hmm. And I got a level three sphere, and I got, I got Ultima for her. And then I used a white magic sphere to get it for Lulu. So I had two people with Ultima at that nice. point. Nice. It was pretty nice, honestly. I wasn't that far away from getting it anyway with Yuna, so I felt kind of like an idiot after I got it. But I still got it a little earlier than I would have. <laughs> so yeah, you know. Well. Yeah, and then the other characters, obviously, you just kind of take them around. They don't right. matter as much. I maxed everybody's own, <coughs> like their own side, without unlocking anything. I mm-hmm. did that first. Like that was my goal: is to just have them level up what their character is supposed to first before right. breaking out. Because I think last time I broke out at the sphere grid early with like everybody cuz i would like just use the level 1 sphere breaker thing. Right. And so i think that might be part of the reason why Final Fantasy 10 for the first time i played that all the way through was a little difficult. This time though it was mostly a very easy game. <laughs> yeah, there were some boss fights that were like holy crap, a couple, a couple. but we'll definitely get to them. It was pretty easy, yeah. Uh, we got a second question from Gammon a, a little off topic. Did you suffer bad breath uh total party kill at any time during the game? So from the Marlboro <laughs> How much time did you lose if it did happen? Um, I did when that I was, was a problem during the the one of the side quests. I yeah, I, when I was leveling up in one of the last areas, the Omega Ruins, I did run into one that did take away about it's probably like forty minutes of time of just Oof. leveling. He just killed me. Oof. I was on the way back. There's really nothing you could do either. No, once I got the ultimate stuff, Warren was unkillable though. Because I got him to where he wasn't confused. So he would just uh, get berserked and like just and go just crazy on the thing. Yeah. yeah, He'd be blind, but his luck got high enough to where it didn't matter. Nice. He would just hit it totally blinded. But yeah, I lost about 40 minutes to one of those. It was, mm-hmm. it was annoying because I was on my way back from leveling up. I was like, okay, that's enough for now. And then I just <laughs> dead. And I'm like, okay, that's enough for tonight. <laughs> that's how yeah, it's going to be. the rest of the week. So fuck this game. Yeah, just put it down. What about you? Did you get any really brutal bad breaths? You saw sometimes when I got bad breathed. Uh, when they're confused and they're hitting themselves and they hit the, for a lot of damage, that seemed to be the thing that would kill me during mm-hmm. those parts. But near the end of the game, they were strong enough that it didn't really matter so much. And that their speed... And agility were high enough that they would always miss themselves. Yeah. And then eventually Marlboro would use some little attack and would unconfuse them. And then they just start automatically attacking Marlboro. Yeah. So that turned out to be not so much of a problem later on. Yeah. And there was a point where I had so much badassness. I don't know what it is with Oron, but I he has counterattack on his ultimate weapon, right? So everyone else would be dead. And it would just be Oron blinded and... Yep. Just enraged. Like yep. he would walk up to the Marlboro and like hit it, down swing, and then like pull a sword up again. And he's just like hacking the shit out of it. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is awesome. Yeah. It's way worth the uh, other two dying that by happened, their own hand. That happened to me a few times. Yeah. Uh, the only time that really becomes a problem is during that capture quest, which we'll get to when we talk about summons, I think. Um, Caleb, what did you think of the overall battle system? I mean, it changed so much. Ever since Final Fantasy IV, it's been active time battle. Right. So far in the series. And Final Fantasy X just said, nope, we're going back to the original three. We're going back to a turn-based system. Yeah. A little different, but a turn-based system nonetheless. Uh, what did you think of it? Um, in general? I didn't mind it. I usually like active time battle more because it's usually quicker, but mm-hmm. ten was a lot faster than nine. 
Yeah. And tens. I think tens was the fastest so far. It's pretty quick. I mean, eight can be pretty godly too when you start getting your speed up there. So you're just like attack, 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 attack. Thing is, with ten is that animations for characters are not long at all. No, and so. except for Lulu, maybe on on her attacks. Uh, so when Titus is just doing his hit, it's like it's like that, and it's done, and so his turn's over. Yeah. And I feel like that is what makes the battle system so fast. They really went this time. I know nine couldn't handle it for hardware reasons or whatever, a fast battle speed. Right. But 10 just made up for it. Yeah, 10 was very quick. I mean, and it was kind of cool seeing the turns off to the side because that added a new element of strategy. And right. it, it kind of makes us more of a strategic game than some of the mm-hmm. active time battles. Mm-hmm. Because you see, okay, he's going to do this. He's going to attack me. It could be this, this, or this. I got to prepare for it, you know. It added a new element of almost fear for some of these bosses. Like, oh, God, what's he going to do? I got to prep, you know. I think the unfortunate thing with Final <coughs> Fantasy X is that it, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the last Final Fantasy that's turn-based. Truly. Yeah? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, because uh, after X, it's open world after that. I mean, 11, well, 12, and 14, they, they all have... They all have commands that are... Um, that have some delays on them, but it's not really turns. No. And then 13 is... 13 is kind of active time. Yeah. It is. But, yeah. No more turn-based after this. I'm, I'm like, 100% sure on that. Yeah, you think it's it's done forever? I think it's done forever. Probably. It's kind of an older way of doing it. That's true. And... But it takes the series back to its roots. It does. And it does add a certain level of strategy yeah, to it, like I said. Yeah, strategy, yeah. I mean, if you get in there and you get a preemptive strike, you actually get to see how many attacks you get before instead of just one with everybody or two with everybody. Yep. So it was a kind of a fun element, and I really liked the battle system in this one. I liked the speed of it. I liked the the system. I liked the, the limit breaks, the way you can kind of tailor how you gauge or how you raise your overdrive gauge. Mm-hmm. I liked the limit breaks themselves. They were, you know, cool looking or OP as hell, depending on the character. I, I really enjoyed it. And I also enjoyed the the battle system for the summons, too. I felt like it's pretty cool to have, you know, your own little battle against monsters with the summon. I still think I kind of prefer the olden days where you just they just come in, fuck shit up, and then leave. But this one is still pretty fun where you actually get to control them for once and you get to kind of strategize with that summon. Mm-hmm. I so, thought that was pretty fun. Speaking of summons, Ooh. or aeons, as they're called in Final Fantasy X, yes. uh, hidden Aeons. You got the Magus sisters, Mm -hmm. you got Yojimbo, and you got Anima. Yes. Uh, I now you got all the summons and so did I. Uh what was probably the easiest out of those to get, you think? Probably Probably Anima. Anima? Okay. You did have to fight that fish guy, and he was kinda rough when I came back. Yeah, you just gotta have stone stone proof on you. You're good. Yeah? Yeah, you're good after that. He dealt Fair amount of damage to me. If you overkill him, you get the encounter none item that you're looking for the entire game. I didn't get it. (laughs) Yeah, I'd say that's probably the easiest. You gotta overkill him with Waka. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. So you get him in the hidden ruins, but only after. To her. Sorry. Only after you go through all the temples and get their destruction spheres. Right. And uh, did you ever? Did you have to go back? I had to go back to Kilika and get the destruction sphere there. No, I had to go back to Xanarkin, but you have to do that one. You can't yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's you're the first very there. last one. You got to go down to the ruins, and then it tells you to go to Xanarkin, and then you go back. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, that. which one did I forget? And then <laughs> I was like, I know I didn't get Xanarkin because it wouldn't let me. It just pushed me forward in the story, and I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want to get back here ever again. Ugh. But uh. Yeah, I'd say that one was probably the easiest. I mean, it took the least amount of time. I mean, for the most part, I tried to get all of them as I was going through the story Mm -hmm. just because the items were pretty powerful and I kind of wanted to make quick work of the stuff I had to do before the stuff I, well, have to do too. (laughs) For different reasons. Yes, for different reasons. (laughs) Naggers. uh... Yeah, Anima was great. Uh, I'm trying to remember what you have to do to go get Yojimbo. I know you have to go into the cave. And you have to pay him, remember? You have to fight your yeah, way to it, and then you right. 
You have to. You can actually barter with them. You got to pay them like a lot. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, a couple hundred thousand. You can actually barter with them and b- bring the limit down by doing a certain amount yeah, less. Yeah, yeah. I think you can bring it down to like two hundred thousand. Yeah, I think that's what I ended up even doing. Even still, that by that time in the game, that's a lot of money. It is, but he's yeah. worth it. He is worth it. Um, and then there's the Mage's sisters, right? Which you have to have trained a chocobo mm-hmm. to get to. So let's talk about the chocobo training for a little bit. Um, not the chocobo race, but the the part where you're going across and they're sh- throwing shit at you. Yeah, the initial training in the Comlands. Mm-hmm. Let uh, let's talk about that for a sec. Okay. The I, I remember the first one is the one where you just go out with the chocobo, right? Yeah, and it's like retarded, and it just runs to the left and right. Yeah, left to the right, and you're just trying unruly. to get it out of the way. Yeah, yeah. And then they add, I believe they add blitz balls to the equation. Yeah, they're flying they just, at you. They just fly at you at the right. Mm-hmm. And then there's one where it's like blitz balls and ex- uh, exploding blitz balls. And birds. And birds, yeah. yeah. And that one's really ridiculous. That one is the rough one. Well. Definitely. Well. Of those, yes. Of those, yes. And uh, <laughs> that's the ones that you need to do in order to get the chocobo so that you can ride one across the calm lands. Right? Uh, I don't even know if you need to do it necessarily to ride a chocobo. Really? You need to do it to get the trophy. but I think you need to do it to ride the chocobo. I think so? Yeah, I think so. Uh, maybe I don't know. I just did it because I knew I had to. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, you get the chocobo, and you go to a certain part of the calm lands where you can jump over it, and then there's a hidden temple. Yeah, it's the uh, Remium Temple. The Remium Temple, the Rimjabium Temple. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sick. And then you have to fight all of the summons of the summoner that's in that temple. Right, and you get some pretty sweet items from it. It's the uh, lady who you've been fighting throughout the throughout the game i mean it's an optional fight obviously because i skipped it the second time what's her name no pants yeah yeah, yeah and uh name. i don't know you fight her you send her afterwards she like says your training is complete you're a god now and i mean you go into that temple and that's the faith is the mage sisters and of mm-hmm. course that's a nice call back to four yeah with the mage sisters from four yeah that's where right. you fought them except for their weird bugs now but you know, other than that, it's pretty much the same. <laughs> that's kind of strange, isn't it? Yeah. Like, why are they bugs? I, <laughs> I don't get it. Anyway, that's how you. Those are the only optional um, aeons, right? Those three. Um, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that should be it. Um. So we both got we got all the summons. I mean, how did you feel about the summons? I know we're gonna have a question about that at some point if we don't talk about it. Do you like the summons from Final Fantasy X? Or um, I do. I mean, they they did fall off eventually, but the cool thing about them is you can actually as far as their power. Yeah, you can actually power them up to where they do max damage with their hits. Nice. It takes a ton of spheres, but you can do it. And I don't know, I kind of like the interactive battle style with them i liked being able to control them i liked being able to take take the regular battle system into those summons and up until final fantasy 10 i believe they just came out and did damage and went away right yeah yeah that was the only it was the only function they had yeah and i i kind of like that more but 10 was kind of a nice you know a nice mix-up where we got a little, a little I did too. 12 takes it to another spot where they're out fighting and you're still fighting yeah yeah I didn't like that one as much. You almost use the summons later in the game to just strategize someone else's overdrive going up, and you're like, well, I got to have a meat shield. Yep. Come on out, <laughs> Shiva. Ready to die. Bal- Balafor goes first. Yeah. <laughs> Even though his flying ability, there's some bosses that can't hit him. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They just can't attack at all. Yep. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. Um,. So besides that chocobo training, uh, there's another chocobo training. Yes, uh, there is. In order to get a piece of Titus's celestial weapon, or right. an upgrade for it, right? Mm-hmm. We'll talk about celestial weapons in a second. Uh, <laughs> you got to get zero, 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 and Schweiss, out of me and you, me and you, Schweiss, you're the only one who was able to do it. Yeah. How, how, how did you do it? 
I don't know. I just did it. I like for just those happens. for those at home who don't know what this race is. It's hell. It's hell. The chocobo jerks from side to side. You're trying to beat this other player on a chocobo uh, through this uh, this fixed camera fixed camera area of the calmlands. That it just it just decides that there's a fixed camera there, and. Uh, the chocobo kind of turns with you, but then jerks away. Yeah, like when the when the camera and the map, the area where you're racing in turns, the chocobo turns with it. And that's problematic because there's birds flying at you at Mach mm-hmm. 1 speed, and they're just hammering into you, and the fucking yep. camera moves your chocobo into the goddamn birds. There's like birds, it's, but you're also trying to get balloons. Yeah, you're trying to get balloons to reduce your time, and a right. bird adds like four or five seconds because it takes three away from your final time, and then you got to recoil from the son of a bitch up, yeah. it's sick okay there's nothing fun about this mini game there is not a damn thing fun about it really? there never is there never will be there never n- none of it it's shit all right i hate it and i did it twice for to help joe out because without oh. titus's ultimate weapon i mean the main character needs to be doing max damage or else it's it's going to be hard to be doing any other optional stuff right Okay, <sighs> so Shinru talking about mini games like that Chocobo thing. I uh, said mentioned this in my review, which he has a review of FF10 on our forum. But do you think FF10 has the worst mini games out of all the main series FF games? Uh, I'd rather play any mini game from Final Fantasies one through nine before playing the broken mess of FF10's mini games. Those Golden Saucer FF7 mini games <laughs> seem so appealing after playing. Tens mini games like Lightning Dodging and Chocobo Race. I don't think Lightning jo- Dodging is necessarily a mini game, but more of a challenge to the player. But the Chocobo Race, I would say, is a mini game, and it can go fuck itself. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The the Lightning one kind of is because of the chest with the rewards at the end. It, it kind of feels mini game. I don't think it's much of a game. Because I, I feel like a game, a mini game in my mind if you're going to come up with like a dictionary definition of it would be something it's a game within a game. So it doesn't use the mechanics of the game that you're in. It uses a separate mechanic. So to me, the mini game would be like triple triad or would be like the Chocobo race, something that is separate from the actual game that you're playing. The lightning dodge, you have to go through that field and then there's optional, there's dodge, there's lightning that comes down and you can dodge them. But I wouldn't call that necessarily a mini game. Right. Um, I guess. I mean, it, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Neither of them are good. So <laughs> No, neither of them are good. And, and in order to get the 200 lightning dodges to get uh, Lulu's um, dealio, her, her, her celestial sigil weapon. Or crest, whichever it is. I think it's um, a sigil. In order to do that, you have to dodge 200 of them. And in order to do that, you can either be extremely good at the lightning dodging for a long time, or you can take 20 minutes... And go to a spot with a little dot on the ground. We talked about this in a previous episode. And just run in a circle around it. And every time you hit like the dark spot on the ground, you press X. Yeah. But even then, you can still fuck up, which I can. did. Yeah. <laughs> it's a difficult challenge. And then there's the, uh, I know you didn't do this, but the the butterfly catching. I tried the butterfly catching. I didn't. I Although, didn't, uh, under your definition of mini game, that wouldn't count either. Because it uses the mechanics of the game, the walking. No, because uh, cause everything else in the game disappears, including random battles. Oh, that's true. I guess so, it does uh, yeah, take it's away. It's like a separate thing. I had my unknown encounters on it anyway, so I didn't even notice. Yeah. No one was I mean, if you hit area. the wrong butterfly, you'll hit a, a, a Yeah, uh, which a, is bull. A battle. And someone I was watching online trying to help me through the first part said that if you hit a random battle, you can't win it. That is a lie. You can still win easily if you hit a random battle. No problem. I hit two when I won. Did you? Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, nice. I hated it still because it was like sick. It's just this <laughs> memory of uh, you got to memorize their patterns. And it, it's kind of difficult to do because they're moving around a lot. And if you mess up a little bit, it throws all the timing off, you know. So that one was annoying too, but I did it mm-hmm. to get uh, Riku's. The other mini game I can think of is Blip Ball. Yeah. Which is a huge part of the game. Huge part of not only the game's plot, but also getting certain trophies in the game. You got to get all of Waka's, uh, his limit breaks. His slots. His slots. And I think you get all, I think you get all the other three from playing Blitzball. 
through both leagues and tournaments. Yep. And uh, and also like his upgrade to his uh, celestial weapon, which you will need. Which yeah, you will need because otherwise the celestial weapons are kind of useless. Yeah, they just do max damage. They just do max damage. Not and... max max, just regular max. <laughs> That's so stupid. I know. Um, and so you do have to play blitz ball for I think about uh, three, four, or five hours of your life <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna play Final Fantasy X to platinum. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you like blitz ball twice? Um, I I thought it was passable. I mean, honestly, by the time I got to the final season where I saw his sigil in the rewards, what I would do is score a goal. And then run around the field with brother outrunning everybody until the time ran out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really enjoy it, but I thought it was okay. Yeah, there's the only challenging part of of Blitzball is maybe the first three or four games. Assuming you know how to play it. Uh, The tutorials are completely freaking useless, by the way. Uh, Yeah, it's pretty (laughs) In Final Fantasy X. It's better to just go on a YouTube video and find out how to play Final uh, the the Blitzball of Final Fantasy X. Because the tutorials are really long and they're... They're convoluted. <sighs> convoluted, and I hate them. I hate those tutorials on, on Blitzball, and that, that was the thing that was stopping me from playing it. I didn't realize you just get the right team together, and they have to have certain stats based on their position. Yeah. And um, then you just have one strategy, uh, or two strategies, depending on how you do it. Uh, my strategy, for the most part, was get the ball to Titus, and then have Titus use Jet Shot. Yeah, it's pretty easy when you do that. Yeah. And I that, tried to that's even like everybody the entire out a little. strategy for it. Yeah. The other strategy is, of course, just do the same thing with brother. Just have brother smack through everyone because he's got a high attack. Yeah. And then uh, have him take it to the goal. He's pretty fast too. <laughs> and then yeah, he's fast. So that l- very last league, I just had brother. I would give the ball to brother, and then uh, I'd have brother swim in circles, and none of the other team members on the other team could catch him. Yeah, so after, his speed after is I'd sick. made after I'd made one goal, I just had brother go in circles and uh, let the <coughs> clock run out. Yeah, that was essentially my strategy. So it's kind of a broken mini game. Yeah, and then there was one more. Let's see, was there only one more mini game? I think so. It was the Cactar mini game on uh, oh, I never did on that. Beacon Out Island. I never did that. You should tell me about it. So I mean, basically. You get back when you come back to Beacon Hill Island. Uh, there's like a cactar, just chilling there, and you walk up to it, and it like gives you this like weird little bio for the cactar. It's like kind of funny. They're like does doesn't play well with others or likes to do this and this, and essentially it's the sneaking part in Final Fantasy IX, where you remember where <laughs> your your frog sit and you're sneaking up on that beast to grab the key. Yeah, it's kind of like that, except for. You're not doing the like sneaking mo- motion. You're just running, and then you have to stop when the cactar turns around. For me. Yeah, that 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 was an awesome part of nine. <laughs> there was some good comedy in that one. But uh, yeah, it's essentially that you have to do that like ten times, and the each cactar has like a different personality. So like the last one was freaking out. He was like spinning around a lot. So I'd like only get a little bit of time to move forward, mm-hmm. and I'd get three chances. And then when I ran up to him, it was like it made this little noise, and then. You battle him, so I just slaughtered him. Nice. And then you get these spheres. You stick it into the cactar symbol that you found off to the side, and it opens up that sandy area. The sandstorm goes away, and then there's a few items down there. And it's kind of fun. I I really like cactars, obviously, for my you know image on the forums as a cactar, and it's just like the coolest thing ever, and it's pretty fun because they're over there doing their stupid little dance thing, and then like they just flip around. And yeah, that, so that one I enjoyed that one, but for the most part, I'm gonna have to say the side quests, or not the side quests, the, the mini games, game. not that great in this one. No, they're lacking. And honestly, we haven't had it, great mini games since seven. I don't think. Even I mean, you could love the card games in, in eight and nine, but I don't. Nines was okay. I, I triple triad. It's like <laughs> the rules change. It's this. It's yeah. sick. You know. Yeah. So it's, I, I it's don't really, yeah, I, I don't really, there's not really any other mini games to put it up against. Six didn't have anything. Six had the arena, but you couldn't actually control the character. They just fought. Yeah. That's like a cut scene. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, uh, sevens. Yeah, yeah I, tens are, tens are lacking, I feel. Yeah, compared to sevens, but I mean like, 
I still like it more than the card game. It's at least variant, and the cacti part was cool, so that puts it above. All right, so this is a question from Light Sage. We're going to move on to the legendary weapons, celestial weapons. Nice. Uh, she says, I'm assuming you are going to tackle a lot of the side quest stuff in FF10. Uh, Schweiss did everything, I believe? Yes. Okay. Everything in the game. Okay, I wasn't able to. <laughs> I just gave up and beat the game at one point. Uh, I'm sick of filling out that sphere grid. It's sick. Uh, so you guys will be trying to obtain at least some of the character's celestial weapons uh, to stand in for ultimate weapons in the game. Uh, my question is, which weapon do you guys think is the easiest to obtain? And on the other side, which one is the hardest? Uh, this usually comes down to how simple the weapon itself is to obtain, as well as the second item needed to power it up, since the first item is simply found in chests. The easiest for me is a no-brainer. Riku's God Hand is very easy to find. Just type God Hand into the ship, uh, into the shit, <laughs> into the airship uh, password screen, and you're there. And as for the sigil item, catch some, catch some cactars in the desert. But here's what makes it so easy. You don't have to win the mini games against the cactars. You can lose every single one and still get the sigil. Super easy. I didn't know that. Yeah, you don't have to win. I lost wow. the first few. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, the first one, it doesn't explain. Or maybe it did explain, but I kind of skipped it. I was like, what the fuck is this thing? Mm -hmm. And the cactar just, like, dominated me. And I'm like, what the hell? I, I, <laughs> I get back here to capture some monsters, and I'm like, it's like, you lose. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> That as, I understood it. As for the hardest, I'd have to go with Titus's Khaled Bulg. Is that how you say How do you say his? I don't know. It's like Khaled Bulg. Uh, Titus's uh, Celestial Weapon. Uh, first, to get the sword, you have to beat the infamous Chocobo race in the Conlands to get access to the sword. But then it gets worse, much worse. To get the sigil, you have to beat the same race again, except with a final time of less than zero. We talked about this. Rest, <laughs> rest in peace to the many controllers that have been thrown into walls trying to complete this maddening feat. Thoughts? I'm Thoughts sorry. Thoughts on the celestial weapons. Oh, okay. All right, the easiest one for me to fully upgrade, and I think it was the same for you, was Auron's. Trying to remember it, how to upgrade it. How did we upgrade it? Remember you go to the Machalinia Woods, and there's that weird like orb thing, and you Oh, bring yeah, the I items. remember that. Well, I don't remember getting the items to upgrade. Orons, you found one in a chest. Okay. You found the sword on that road. Remember the rusty sword? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got the other one from the monster catcher quest. You had to oh, capture yeah, like yeah, yeah. 30 things. I wouldn't necessarily call that easy. But if it, only 30 things? It's like it's like three. Right. Yeah, it's not very much. It's not like the the capture quest is really difficult. It's just time consuming. Yeah, so, yeah so, I think I'd agree with you on that. On the, on the weapons that I did upgrade fully... Uh, which were just Wakas and Aurons, and then twice cheated for me and upgraded Titus's. For me. <laughs> uh, uh, of of those of those that I upgraded fully, yeah, that yeah, that was probably the easiest. Yeah, I don't remember Wakas being difficult. You just have to play a lot of Blitzball. Yeah, in order to get that final upgrade. Right, and then you get the weapon from just playing a few games yeah. from that uh bar, mm -hmm. that diner that Kamari and his buddies fought right. in. Right. So, I, I don't know. I agree, though. Finding it's, the weapons, none of them are hard, really. No, as far as God Hand, that's probably the easiest to find, just because you type it in, you go there, it's the only chest. I disagree. Being... Praying at all the Cactar temples in the in the lightning area and getting Kimaris is not that hard. Is uh, that Kimaris or is it Lu? Uh, it's Kimaris, it's, it's Lance. Kimaris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's pretty easy, too. I don't too. think that's a challenge at all. I didn't think any of them were really that challenging. I mean, it's, getting it's the, the upgrades that are, that are hard. Yeah, to get. Those, are, those are the pain. So uh yeah, you did did you you upgraded every single one, right? Just yeah. to just to shut people up about the side quest, right? Yeah, partly. <laughs> and now I, I am completely done with ten. I don't have to ever touch it again. Never have to touch it again. You can just go into the theater place if you wanna Yeah, and just recap it. You yeah, know. Just recap it. <laughs> so yeah, I uh some of them were pretty cool. I mean Oron's is awesome looking, Titus's is really cool looking, Waka's is impossible to hold. Yeah, and, all the spiked edges. Yeah, and Lulu's I thought was really cool. The little onion knight thing that like walks up to it and just stabs it with his little tiny little sword. That one was fun. Yeah, did you end up doing max max damage? With yeah, with it, yeah. That's got to be an incredible image. It is. This little dude just like... <laughs> 99,999. <laughs> How do you feel 
about it breaking the damage limit in Final Fantasy X. I believe this is the first time it, they really break it. Um, yeah, it's the first time they show it. In FF3, it broke too, though. Okay. You could do more than 9999. Nine, nine, nine. It, it just, just wouldn't show it. Okay. Uh, I, it doesn't really matter. It's all arbitrary, really. I mean, it doesn't matter what max damage is. There's still a max. I think the problem is that they got that sphere grid, and they got spheres, so you can bring your strength up to max, and thus any weapon in your hand could do max damage. Oh, yeah. And so when you're going out and getting um, the celestial weapons, they have to make that a thing. They have to somehow make that worth it. Yeah, a reward. Break the max damage. I mean, you can... Weapons. I had other weapons that I found through the monster arena that gave me break damage mm. and I could customize the rest of it to whatever I wanted, which I was like, that's amazing. I could do whatever I want. I could just, I, I oh man, counter freaking first strike, all of that shit. I could throw on one. I didn't because I'm like, Hey, after I do this, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you can, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think that's the reason why they had you break the damage is because they realized the sphere grid's huge if you fill it out like I did, you're going to have a ton of power, and it's all mm -hmm. going to be wasted once you get past, like, maybe a maybe 100 or so. It's your max damage every time, no matter what. Yeah. All you have to do is, like, just in order to kill Jet at the end of the game, just hit him twice. Yeah. Like, really? That's it. I hit him once, man. I, I gave him... Oh, you hit him, and then you hit him again. Of the no, game. that's true. Well, I, 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 I gave him some dignity. I did uh, Blitz Ace to him. You know what time. I did? I, I felt like the first one I just gave him one hit and then he pulled the sword out. And then on the second one I was like, I'll do Titus's limit break because that'll make it seem epic. <laughs> yeah. At the very least. So that's what I did. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we shamelessly slaughtered it though with the over overpowered weapons and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Hey, we put it in the work, man. We deserve it. <laughs> well, I didn't. You took the chocobo thing. That's true, yeah. I guess I could have like upgraded someone else's weapon and done it, did it just fine. But the problem is, is he was already super far in the sphere grid. Says, yeah, I wanted him to to use it. That's the big problem with that. <laughs> so I, I liked the uh, I liked the ultimate weapons. It was it was a fun side quest. Mm -hmm. So uh, what about what about those things that are only for the HD version of Final Fantasy X? Those uh, those special little creatures, those dark aeons. Yeah. Twice, you're the only one who can talk about these because I, I tried to fight Yojimo and I couldn't do it because I wanted to kill him and then say like "fuck you," I don't need those Lux spears. Yeah. Um, but I I was not able to kill him. I got, I felt like I got close though. Like I he was weakened and I was still doing a ton of damage, but then of course you know he just Wazakashi's at the wrong time. And yeah, and I'm dead. And I was like, and the yeah, problem it took is, me 40 minutes to get through to this part, and I'm not gonna restart it. The problem is, is you have to fight him five times too. Yeah, but the first time is supposed to be the hardest, according to a guide I saw. <laughs> yeah. All right. So with the dark aeons, essentially what they are is when you're on the run from the church, the idea is that you're not supposed to return back to older areas before you beat the game. And in the international version, this was kind of a punishment and a kind of a way to make it to where you can't just go back to Pasay just for the hell of it because it's a, you know, it's a Yevon town. Mm -hmm. And this was like the punishment for going back was these friggin' dark incantations of these aeons that are your friends, right? And the problem with it is, is I fought, I was kind of st staggering the side quests by the end. I didn't just do because you don't want to level up for hours and hours yeah, without I couldn't, doing something else. I couldn't handle it. Like, I, I had to do something else, so I went back to Besay and I was like, "All right, I'll fight the Dark Valifor." I had all the max weapons; everything was maxed. The problem with that one was is they kept uh, doing the little limit break, the energy ray as a standard attack. It wouldn't even be the overdrive. Mm -hmm. The overdrive would be that second overdrive that you can get from the the dog and the person in Besay that you didn't grab, but. Mm -hmm. You can get that as the second one. And uh, it would do max damage. It would do 9999. Nine, 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 and it would kill everybody. So then what I did is I upgraded Titus's armor to where he broke HP limit. And then I essentially had him live and use a Mega Phoenix to pull everybody else back up and then just hacked him until I killed him. And the nice thing about killing him is that he drops an item that gives Auron the max uh, HP break. So then I had Titus and Oron breaking max HP, 
without having to create the second weapon or the second item for Oron. Mm-hmm. And that made it easier. So I was able to fight Dark uh, Valifor, Dark Ifrit, and Dark Ixion legitimately. Okay. And then Dark Shiva was wrong. <laughs> she was sick as hell. I had such good stats. I was so powerful, but she would. I didn't have max luck, and she would just dodge my attacks every time. I could not hit her. And the bitch would get like 500% of her friggin' <laughs> overdrive. It'd be like, oh, I'm halfway because you missed. And then she would do she would do her limit. And sometimes even when I had auto life on her, she would still just like kick me three times in a row after they get up and I'm dead. So I decided to go super cheap and level up Yojimbo and uh, Zanmato for the win, I say. Nice. And I Zanmatoed my way to uh, the Platinum, essentially. <laughs> Yeah, you had to fight Yojimbo, though, didn't you? I did. I had to legitimately fight him. It's the problem with Yojimbo. His dark Aeon is you have to fight him five times in a row. So I'm like, okay, what I'll do is I'll max out these three, Titus, Waka, and Orin, and then I went back to Yojimbo's cave and fought dark Yojimbo, and I killed him. That kind of fucked you over, though, because when you were leveling up later, you had to get all those Lux Spheres, which... In case you guys don't know, the Lux Spheres are the hardest thing to get. Yeah, the There's problem... There's Lux Spheres and you fill them up with Fortune Spheres. And they're both hard to get because yeah. the guys that you that drop them are... They have a lot of HP and they're really powerful. Yep. Especially the guy who drops the Lux Spheres, the water thing. Yeah, he's brutal. Mm-hmm. He is a sick bastard. So luck. It's really important, but it takes a long time to do. Some people say if your agility is maxed all the way, like mine was, that he's he's beatable, uh, Yojimbo, but I wasn't able to do it. Yeah, I, I just did the luck. And that your luck needs to be at least 80, I think, is what mm. is the number I heard. But mine was at like 70, and it was still just... <laughs> wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. It was it was too much. It was just too much. <laughs> right. And then I, uh, of course, unlocked Nemesis in the monster arena. Mm-hmm. I Zanmatoed him. Let's talk about the monster arena. Oh, yes. So the monster arena, there's a guy uh, in the calm lands. Um, this is where you get your optional bosses, and this is where you get things to drop certain spheres. Is He's this sick motherfucker who does uh, biological engineering and splicing of different creatures. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine he's like like some Nazi from back in the war. He just kind of got his own little area. He's like really messed up. And he makes you do all this work, and then he makes you fight, pay to fight the things. I'm like, dude. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, you got to collect 10 of each monster in the entire game. Yes. Not not bosses, but no, uh, thank God. Yeah, that would be impossible. But the regular ones, but some are so rare that you're you're going around for hours. You got special weapons that capture the monsters. Mm-hmm. You're going around for hours waiting for a fucking Toneberry King. Oh yeah, he was a rough one to show. <laughs> uh, a Toneberry King. There was like a bird in Mushroom Rock that took forever to get out, and then yep. the Cactars. I I had trouble with Cactars in the lightning the thunder planes yeah they were they were pretty rare and uh, oh i think cactars in the in uh, the sand place oh you know what sucks you can actually do that with the side quest because you get 10 of them oh my god are you serious yep what every time you catch one you get to fight it that would have saved me two hours of gameplay time i'm pretty sure yeah yeah. You go to wait until later. There are like certain sweet spots to get certain creatures, but even then, it's like still rare. Yeah, like the tone berries were, they were very rare. So each, each the capture quest, not a hard quest, and it levels you up a shitload. Yeah, it's great. So even if you just did the capture quest, you'd be ready for end game and you'd destroy. Yeah. Um, but, and it, and it gets you so many items too. It does. But you it's, get, it's not necessarily a hard quest, as I was saying. It was, it's just it's so time-consuming. Until you get to maybe uh, Omega Ruins, and then it gets pretty hard. I don't even think so then. I didn't have problems with the Omega Ruins. Well, the Marlboro is the only problem, yeah, I the guess. The Marlboro is the only problem. In the Once you get to there with the capture quest, you are pretty leveled up. Yeah. So you've it's... Gone, you've gone through gone through all the way to Gagazat. Yeah, so I mean, I enjoyed the capture quest just because of the the rewards that I reaped from it. And it was kind of a fun thing. Cause we both printed off a paper that had the, like the list of things. And then we just check Mark every time we got a guy. Yeah. I also took that opportunity to steal with Riku. 
yeah. hundred times. That's when I did it too. Is, yeah. And then also I grabbed the jet spheres along the way, which of course you use those to uh, get limit breaks for Oron. Hmm. And that's how you get his uh, his limits is based on how many of the jet spheres. I wasn't you able have. to do the jet spheres thing all the way because uh, <laughs> when I went back, there was some mage sisters in the way on one of the trails, and then I lost like two hours of gameplay time. I didn't realize where the dark mage sisters. I didn't were. realize either. I and uh, I got fucked over. Nice. Seriously. That was when you were looking for primers. Actually, the Besaid was the dark Valifor is the one that screwed you over from. Uh, Getting the jet sphere in Besaid, remember? Oh, that was Besaid. I was talking about a different one. Oh, okay. Uh, walking from Mushroom Rock to whatever the next area is. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'll take the I'll take the scenic route, yeah, and then I'll you get the hammered. Route. And then there was uh, there was some major sisters. Tell you what, more. Zan Matoing those those little uh, bastards was satisfying. It just all it? three of them just <laughs> I'm like get out of here, you fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Hate them. <laughs> They're brutal. You didn't even get to touch them, right? They just like. Yeah, they they killed me in one, in one shot. That was it. They didn't even give me a turn. That's sick, dude. Yeah. You didn't even get a chance to Zan Mato. You didn't even get a chance to throw every piece of kill you had at him yeah. to save you. Nothing, man. <sighs> it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's I think that's it as far as side quests are concerned, right? Um Is that it? I believe. I mean oh, there's oh, oh, the optional bosses. Yeah, That's there's right. the... So after you get all the capture quests, you fight every single optional monster, right? Right, there's original monster, there's character-specific monsters, and then there's area-specific. Species conquest. Area conquest, species conquest, and original. Yeah. And of course, we did fight Shinru, and I was able to slay you, I will say. <laughs> Not necessarily easily, because it was an underwater battle, and I had to have Riku there, because she's the only one... Her, Waka, and Titus are the only ones that can partake of the underwater battles. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she got slammed and I just left her dead because I'm like, hey, you're not, you're not worth the time. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, I, I enjoyed Nemes the capture Nemesis quest, and, pen and, and Penance? Yeah. Um, <sighs> Nemesis, I fought. I, essentially, I just said Mato, honestly. I, I mm -hmm. tried to fight him and he was, he was rough. He was doing a lot of damage. Now I could probably go through now, now that I'm completely maxed out, and With I could your luck stats. I could probably kill him, mm -hmm. but I don't think I could have killed. Uh, I don't think I could have killed Penance. He was insane. He was still killing me instantly, and I was completely maxed with my characters. He he was fast and he was deadly. So I signed Mato to him. I'm like, all right, you know what? I tried, buddy, and uh, this is what you want. This is how you wanted it to end. So here you go. I just wanted go. to be cut in half by yeah. some random summon. Here, here's 500,000 gil, and uh, yeah, kill this fool. And he did. <laughs> so as far as bosses in the game, okay. Uh, let's talk about you know the actual storyline bosses for a second here. We got a question um, from Void first. Uh, which boss fight did you struggle with? with the most in your playthrough for him it was one of the seymour fights later in the game uh he thinks it was seymour flux uh it didn't actually struggle with any of the enemies in the final dungeon at all uh seymour flux that's a that's a pretty difficult one yeah that one's the snow one right um i think okay, let me check let me double check if it is then yes the uh, the reason why he's so brutal is he has those attacks. Basically, when you when you come into the fight, he hits you with this spear of atrophy thing, which makes your guy a zombie. Yeah, that's him. And then he cures, he casts full life on you. And then he also has that cross cleave move that hits everyone for a shitload. Mm -hmm. And then he has that Armageddon move that just Armageddon that just annihilates you. You know. He was tough. Yeah. I, I, I think I actually have to agree. Uh, Seymour Flux was the only guy that I had to basically cheat my way into killing. Yeah. The, using the summons, of course. Yeah, I uh, I couldn't get past it, so I was like, all right, well, you know, I'm I'm going to go fight some random enemies. I'm going to get everybody, every, all the summons limits up, and um, I'm going to do max damage to this asshole. So as far as in-game in -game summons, I do agree with the Void. I think that was the hardest fight in the game. Yeah. However, the first time I played this game, I beat him in one try. 
Yeah. The very first time. I don't know. I you know, I'm looking back at uh, a few years ago now. <laughs> As far as the first time I played this game, I do remember going, "Oh no, another Seymour fight," and then just killing him one try. Like, really? Oh yeah, that he's too he's bad. tough. But this time around, he was a pain in the ass. Yeah, and then it's like, what did I do last time to make him so easy? And what I will say is, the very first Seymour fight is also brutal because when I was going through to grab those primers and home to mm-hmm. get the platinum, he was he was insane. Like he was destroying me. I would get you past were him. Though, I would get past Anima. You were to speed through. Yeah, I was. And then he would do that double cast thing, mm-hmm. and he would just insta kill. So what I ended up doing was doing null, doing all the nulls on everybody, so mm-hmm. that when I got to that part of the fight, I could uh, not take damage. You'd get like three turns without having to take damage. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I did is I cast nulls, and then I took them out of the game until the very end, and then the nulls were still on. Nice. Yeah. So. It was it was tough even then though. Like I I had there was one part where it was just Riku and she had her overdrive <laughs> and I'm like this he had like seven hundred, no, he had nine hundred life. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm like looking through the things, I'm like, okay, what can I use to kill this guy? And I throw two power spheres together and I do this explosive attack, seven hundred and eighty damage. And then he kills her. I'm like, fuck. Oh, you were so close. I know, I like slammed away. That's that's like, nothing. Slammed my controller into the couch. <laughs> course did nothing because it's cushiony but all right he was he was brutal too so uh shinru has some uh other questions about uh certain bosses uh right. do yeah, you asks... think the seymour fights and the unalesca fight were the best ones in the game i assume that's that means he thinks they're the best ones in the game but what do we think about those fights uh which boss was your favorite and uh what was your favorite dungeon uh so yeah Schwartz. Favorite boss? What, what, what was your favorite boss? Um, I'd probably have to say the one that I killed in one hit. No. <laughs> That's my favorite boss. Yeah, Sin, baby. Unaleska is a pretty sweet boss. Yeah, her. Yeah, she's a fun one. But I really liked Omega, and I know he's not required, but he was pretty sweet. I rocked him though. I destroyed him. I but as far as the him. as far as the required bosses, I'd probably have to say. I'd probably have to say the jet fight is my favorite because of how epic it is. And then when he pulls mm-hmm. the sword out of his chest, it's like, it's, it's fucking it's awesome. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Him. And then probably Unaleska is the, my top two. Yeah. Unaleska fights for this has game. a move called mega death. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mega death and final fantasy. They go hand in hand. Really, they do. Especially in that fight. Uh, I thought Unaleska, as far as the design with the coils and then the, freaky zombie sort of feel to the whole fight yeah i'd say yeah probably probably one of the coolest fights it was a good one i do like going into sin the first time and then uh you yevin the fight itself is really cool i think but i know it's not really a boss (laughs) because you know you can't lose yeah but i thought that part was cool and i agree with you jet sweet the sword coming out of the chest. It's just awesome. All right. He has a second part to this. He asks, what was your favorite dungeon? Yeah. He really likes the Omega Ruins, and so do I. It's a, a cool area. Omega Ruins is your favorite dungeon? Yeah. Yeah, I remember you playing that, because I, I didn't even touch the Omega Ruins the first time I played this game. And uh, I was just, when I saw you going into that area, I was like, that, that place is awesome looking. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. And then Omega at the back <laughs> of it's sweet. I do like the cave. Uh, the sunken cave. Yeah, I think yeah, it's really cool and atmospheric. Yeah. What about the cave of the stolen faith? That's the one I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah I was like, <laughs> sunken cave. Oh, I mean, there is another cave in Gagazette. It's it's all right. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's. Oh yeah, it's another one. There was another chunk of it. There's another chunk. Yeah. What are you talking about? To his question. Oh, we already answered that question. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, what do you think about that final dungeon? I think uh, I think Shinru has a question here about the final dungeon, so let's let's ask that. This is, this is a little long, but I'll get to it. All right. I love FF10, said Shinru, but I do acknowledge some of the problems the game has. Uh, I think out of all the FF games, FF10 has the worst final dungeon. Shinru's all about final dungeons. I feel like he has a question about the final dungeon every time. 
uh, and final boss in the series. I remember the first time playing and getting to the final dungeon area i was very disappointed then the final boss was disappointing as well hear me out ff1 through 9 had a fairly long final dungeon and they were usually the best dungeons in the entire game like ultimacia castle and final fantasy 8 okay that is a very cool dungeon um the final dungeons were always about testing you and giving you a large area to explore with many winding paths secret areas and boss fights and treasure chests to open not only that but the final dungeons also had really cool unique designs even ff13 has a good final dungeon ff13 has a has a final hallway yeah (laughs) it's like a big white hallway it's cool looking uh i guess maybe he counts the area before that but uh, now look at FF10's final dungeon. You arrive inside Sin, and the first part of the dungeon is just a branch of fog and mist covering the area. And then there's just Yu Yevon symbols gl- glowing on the floor. And there's just one main path to reach the end of the area. There are some tiny chests on tiny branching paths, but you can literally walk through it all in like one minute. Uh, not if uh, you don't have the random encounters off. <laughs> but uh, of course I did later on. But yeah. you had to do the capture quest there, so eh, not one minute, but yeah, yeah, it's pretty short. Then you get to the final Seymour fight, which is, in my opinion, better than the final boss fight. More on that later. So you finish the first area of the dungeon and arrive at the second area. I first thought that this was the real final dungeon uh, area and expected it to get good like the other FF dungeons. It... <laughs> It's mostly just an abandoned city. One straightforward path with a few chests hidden in the side on the side along the way. You get to the save point in like one minute and then it's final boss time. Very boring area and no exploration. I think FF10's final dungeon is the most uninspired one in the series and they just tried to finish it quickly in my opinion. Uh, then there is the final boss. As you know, each FF game since FF2 has at least two, if not three, forms of final boss fights. In FF10, you get to Jet, you beat him, then comes you Yevon. I was like, hell yeah, here comes another final boss, like Necron. Nope. Auto life gets cast on your entire party. You could be level 10, keep your eyes closed and mash X and still win this fight. It would take a, lo- it would take, uh, a long time, but you would still win. I don't appreciate the final boss in an FF game being so easy that it's impossible to lose. The random enemies in the dungeon were stronger than the final boss. Some people argue that you have you Yevon isn't the final boss, but then that just leaves Jet, which would make FF10 the only Final Fantasy ever FF1 to have only one final boss fight. And that's it. What are your thoughts, guys? It it has two. It has two forms of jet. That uh, and there's Seymour in the final area too. Yeah, and there's and there's Seymour. So mm, like FF three, there's you gotta move from one spot to the next. It has the fog thing like in FF three also. And then you get to Seymour and I it is a short path and kind of uninteresting to get to Jet. But Jet does have two forms. It's not just one character it has two he has two different health bars that you have to go through yeah yeah and i love the second one when he pulls out the sword it's yeah really sweet. that end i mean you yevon is supposed to be weak that's part of yeah. the story is that sin is his armor sin is his strength without yeah. sin he's just he's just as vulnerable as anybody else so i mean we talked about this a little bit in the story section we did uh, about you yevon being weak i don't think it really takes away from it I think Jet is the final boss. Now, if you're the type of player that plays to completion like we did this time around, Jet is super easy. Yeah. Um, but if not, if he's, you he's really are just only. getting to the end of the game, like past me or you on your super fast uh, version, trying to get your uh, your Albed primers, mm-hmm. um, if you're trying to get through it fast, then Jet does become a challenge. Um I think if you're just playing the game normally, Jet becomes a challenge. Yeah, he does. Yeah, if you if you choose not to do side quests, um, he's tough. I mean, he's tough. He turns a lot. He has he uses stone a lot. <laughs> yeah, status and effects. He heals Royce a lot the and uh, and all the other stuff. Now this time it took me. It took us what two hits to kill yeah, him? Yeah, two hits. Because one hit for one form, one hit for the other form, and then you're done. Uh, but uh, I like the final boss. I like the final boss. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right about the final dungeon thing though. It is, yeah, it's not that inspiring necessarily, but I never really hated it. I've never really had a serious problem with it. And the the city on top of Sin thing is, you know, it's kind of weird, but uh, that's the... Yeah, I like the design of it, but... Yeah. It is a little small. It is oddly small. 
for I a would final, say so, for yeah. final area. But I think Yu Yevon being the way he was is fine. Because you had to fight the summons before that too. I mean, it's no different than fighting Sephiroth right at the very end. Yeah, he's in easy. Final Fantasy Seven, and so was Kafka. It's like you you kill you know the boss version of Sephiroth, and then there's the story part where it's like okay, finish him off. That's exactly what this is. In Apparently, you can lose at that part. Yeah, if yeah. You wait. Someone, I think someone on the forum posted that. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> I have never wait. I was always like, oh my god, I gotta kill this thing. All right, so Schweiss, gameplay-wise, how do you feel? Uh, I feel like the gameplay was pretty good. Um, I mean, the side quests, I found the side quests fun, but I found the minigames mostly uninspiring and atrocious. (laughs) (laughs) But overall, I'd say the gameplay would be fairly solid. Probably like a Mm 7 out of 10 for overall like side quests and stuff like that. What about you? Final thoughts? Uh, you know, if you include side quests, then yeah. Um, Ten's lacking in that department. It, it's lacking in the department of making those things fun. I mean, besides the capture quest, which in a way was fun. Yeah. It's still super frustrating. But uh, <laughs> uh, other mini mini games, Blue Ass, uh, Blitzball got boring real quick. The game just wants to, basically wants to fuck you over as much as it can. And in some of those other mini games, it's sadistic. It really is. There's nothing enjoyable yeah. about it. There's no skill involved. It's mm-hmm. random. It's sick. The camera angles are god awful, and the controls are far more atrocious than anything should ever be mm-hmm. for that fucking chocobo race. <laughs> I hate it. I can do it, but I hate it. I agree. However, I do believe that the battle system is uh, probably one of the best in the series, in my opinion. Yeah, I would say so too. It's great. It's the magic is good. The leveling is good. The the in battle fighting is good. You can go as fast as you want. It's it's a nice. I really wish it would let me pause. Yeah, that would not be great. Have my gameplay clock go. That is one like, part that's annoying. Gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, that's that's about it as far as things that you know I would want improvement on in the gameplay aspect of things. I I really enjoyed the gameplay, um, yeah. Just the regular battle system and the leveling, I really enjoyed. Nice. I really loved how open the battle. Uh, I really love how open the sphere grid system made leveling and how interesting it made it. Uh, you know, and and I love the battle system. Yeah, one thing we didn't really. Th- touch on very much is the the kind of character specific enemies like this is kind of the i know other final oh, fantasies yeah, 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 yeah. they have stuff kind of like this like you know okay you have it to do it with the job system yeah so different jobs against certain enemies and then you'd have that so in final fantasy 3 or final fantasy 5 there'd be a certain job that you'd want that character to to switch to in order to take care of it. Yeah, and I mean, so, I saw somebody kind of complain about this part of the game where they thought it was kind of monotonous, but honestly, that's how it's always been. It's just more direct now. It gives you, it's like, hey, this is what you need to do if you want to kill this. Seven and eight, um, two very popular entries in the series, uh, they they let you be open about every single character. Yeah. Uh, so no one was really a white mage. No one was really a black mage, because everybody can do everything. True. And so people used to that probably had a problem with it. But if you're used to the job system, it makes sense. It's something that we're used to. Plus, you can switch characters out like that. And that's also a really cool aspect of this game that I I do quite enjoy. So you see a treasure chest, you pull Riku out. If you see a a guy with a lot of armor. You pull out Oron, or yeah. a flying creature, Waka, uh, a magic creature, Lulu. Uh, I'll bad Riku again, just piece I'll it, pull Riku it apart, again, yeah. which is awesome. Uh, the only useless characters I find are probably Kimari and and uh, and Yuna didn't have enemies specific to them. Yeah, yeah. Their overdrives are pretty awesome though, and the summons obviously. Yeah. Kimari's last one is sweet. Is it? I never got to. It looks really cool. Mm-hmm. It does a lot, too. But, I mean, by then, everything does a lot, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so as far as gameplay, I think uh, I think it's a fantastic uh, addition to the series. I um, would agree. Yeah. So, uh, Schweiss, let's talk about design. Yes. So, uh, once again, Nomura, the belt director, I mean, uh, character, I mean, belt design. what? Belt designer? 
Character designer. Character designer. That's right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Character designer for Final Fantasy X. There was another uh, art director also. I think his name is Naora. Is that his name? Hold on. Let me find out this guy's name. Yeah. Yasuke Naora was the art director for the game. However, the character design was by Nomura once again. Right. <sighs> character design. Schweiss, how did you feel about the character design? Um, Including belts, antler hair that's blue. <laughs> um, pant leg. Pant leg, that's right. Yeah, one pant, one. <laughs> Walk his hair. Um, <laughs> honestly, it, it kind of bothers me. Like, it's not enough to really truly take the game down a notch, but... I would never have gone that way with this game. Never in a million years would I have thought to make Antler Man or, you know, his quail hair for Waka or the <laughs> quail hair. That's right. That's, yeah, that's the way like to the describe little, it. Yeah, or the belts with Lulu. Like it's just, I would have never in a million the years. Giant tits. Yeah, I like that. Part. Yeah, but yeah, I would have yeah, never yeah. in a million years uh, put that in a game. Like I, I don't understand why why it's there. No. No. I mean, even considering FF9, the character design is mild in FF9 compared to Titus. Yeah, <laughs> like Titus With the exception is... of maybe Quinna. Yeah. But any human character, holy shit. <laughs> the Blitzball uniforms really bug me. Yeah, they're especially for the Aurochs, they're wearing like these rubber looking trouser things with suspenders <laughs> and then all this random stuff. Like, I, I don't know. It's, and then everyone is like almost naked and everyone else. Yeah. All the side characters. Yeah. Seymour's got like a freaking chest opened all the way to his crotch kind of thing. I, <laughs> I didn't really care for it that much in this no, game. I hate the character design, honestly. Like you, you're right. It doesn't take you out of it except when you see Seymour for maybe the first time. Yeah. <laughs> or every time after that, it's. <laughs> <laughs> He's something to laugh at, honestly. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of terrible. Yeah. Oron is awesome, but and everybody's always wearing the thongs. I don't get the thong. Pants. Yeah, like they're swimsuits, you know, like bikinis and <laughs> <sighs> so inappropriate, honestly. Yeah, and some of it's just so unnecessary. I don't see a single purpose behind half of what they're wearing. Like, why mm -hmm. is Titus wearing those boots? I mean, like, I like Oron. I don't understand why he always has one arm in his um, kimono, but... I don't either. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I always much. thought he was the wounded. Other, as the other designs. But he's not. He's fine. Yeah, he's just fine. He uses it later on. Kamara's is fine, too. His design is okay. I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. He's just kind of wearing armor. Yeah, he's just a humanoid creature thing. Yeah. And the, same with the Guados. Oh, the Guados are weird, but... Yeah, but that's fine. Yeah, that's, it's not. That's passable. Seymour is not passable, really, for me. It's <laughs> it's too ridiculous. None of the other Guado have that hair. Yeah, like they the hair is messy and it looks like a, they're like part ant. But there are also some things like why does Unaleska have to be almost naked? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really like she'll just wear that in a in in, a, in her living room. Just yeah, and no one cares. No one notices. I don't know. It, it does bother me. Like it's almost like they're intentionally naked or it's close so to. to the extreme. Yeah, like some of the Albed, they'd be, they'd be just like in their underwear, and like <laughs> thongs and stuff. I'm like, why? Or like the the Chocobo chick, the Lucille, the Chocobo knight. Mm -hmm. Her party. She's like, she has like the most ridiculous clothing on imaginable. <laughs> There's like the most useless armor. Yeah, and like I don't know, it, I I didn't really care for the character design at all in this game. Yeah. I felt like it was wacky. It was all over the place. It didn't have, it didn't have really a central theme. It was just whatever the fuck they wanted for specific <laughs> characters, and like it just I don't know. I I didn't care for it too much. Yeah. Well, we got someone who disagrees with us here. It's Floyd. Really? Void. Yeah. Uh, he says Lulu has some of the most impractical belts ever. Uh, her wardrobe is interesting. Uh, although improbable in FF10. Not only her, but all the characters in FF10 have a cool look, he says. I think the designers did a great job in this Final Fantasy of making each character look and feel unique. They did make them look and feel unique. Yes. Uh, although I hate the design. 
But he's asking what the favorite char- what your favorite character design is in the game. Uh, talking about the visual look, not gameplay mechanics, of course. Um, probably Oren. The most simple classic design is Oren. Yeah. I didn't mind some of the side characters. They had decent clothes. It wasn't like crazy, crazy. But like the the one summoner chick that you meet that you have to fight to get to. Uh... The ass in the back. Yeah, there's that, yeah. and then there's those weird orb things that she has on the side of her head. Like, it just doesn't serve a purpose other than to look zany and crazy, and I don't like things that do that, that have no <laughs> purpose just to uh, other than to be crazy. Yeah. I mean, they that, are that unique. That seems to be most of the... I, I, like, I like... You know what? Design doesn't bug me. Eunice. Yeah, Eunice is great. It's like religious attire. It makes its robes. I like the design on her sense. robe. It's it's great. The, yeah. you know, the star moon thing. Yeah. I, I do like Eunice too, and most of the main characters are okay, except for the belt thing bugs me, and then Titus's wardrobe doesn't make any sense. But it's the side guys that I think they really failed. Hair. Yeah, and walk his hair. But the side characters I think are the ones that are annoying, <laughs> and like it's just I don't know. It's almost zany to the point where just for the sake of being zany, and I I think that's fucking stupid. Honestly, I have no other way to describe no, it. I, I, like, I agree with you character design wise it's it's out there yeah it's insane <laughs> the meg ryan hairs yeah oh it was it was 2001 the the bleached hair it, it, it was in it was in vogue yeah that yeah. doesn't bother me too much but some of the outfits not walk is... hair walk his hair was not in vogue dude. no <laughs> never never has been <laughs> oh Sorry, Void. Sorry, Void. I mean, you're right. They are unique, interesting, and unique, and very improbable. <laughs> but most of the side characters I thought were laughable. Their designs, like. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> besides the character design, there are other aspects of design. Of course, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the the world of Sphera, of the summons even? What do you think? It's, uh, we already talked about the summons designs. Uh, what, what was your favorite summon? You think out of uh, out of all of them, what was the coolest one to you? Probably Yojimbo. Yojimbo, really? Yeah, that? either him or Bahamut, because mm. they're awesome. They're awesome. Yojimbo has his insta kill thing. He's this cool little warrior dude with his little dog sidekick. <laughs> Daigoro. Yeah, and. Oh, I just liked his design. I like the little the atmosphere that when he comes out, like the little tree mm-hmm. and the weird little music. Boing. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I liked Anima. Yeah, Anima oh, was Anima really was cool too. Incredible, like godly looking. That's that's and then, very and true. And then when it uses its overdrive, it like comes under into the depths of hell and then does this insane punch move. Yeah, I thought that was probably my favorite summon. Yeah, there was some great artwork design as far as the summons go, though. That's true. And I'd say, you know, the last part of design is, of course, the world itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, wow. I know that they had to take, like, field trips when they were designing this game. Uh, they tried to make it have an a Pacific Islander-like feel to the game. Uh-huh. Instead of what they did with nine, which was like a European style, right, or eight, where it's like the pseudo modern kind of thing, or with seven, uh, the dark anime style, or six is the steampunk. This time it was like Islander, yeah, uh, Hawaii, Japan, and all the other islands in between. That's what they were kind of going for with the with the design of the world, right, around Spira, and and they and they wanted to water like. Uh, look to it because water was so important uh, to the design and uh, uh, of this game. Right. Yeah, and uh, I thought it looked great. All the blues and yellows, you know. Yeah, it was a great color palette for the game. Mm-hmm. It, it looked gorgeous. The there wasn't a single area in this game that I that I hated. Right. There wasn't a single area that I was like, ah, this is just bland. Yeah. It's boring. It, it was all interesting. All very interesting. Very interesting. And I, uh, I can't really say anything more about the design other than like, it was beautiful. It's a beautiful game. Yeah. And uh, it all fits together uh, perfectly. I think. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a very nice theme to it, and it's, it's bright. It's good. So, uh, music. <laughs> well. I felt like the music was pretty good. Honestly, the 
let's see the atmospheric feel to a lot of the the tunes was you know it left a positive taste it was uh it felt right for the most part in these areas what music was playing and i i think it was a great soundtrack and the intro the two zanarkin song one of the best in the series i think it's my personal favorite yeah yeah do, 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 do. I think it's I think it's just a great piano piece. It's really good. I the last nine and ten have like amazing intro songs and <laughs> into their menus. Yeah, into the menus and tens was it's really good. Mm-hmm. And the only music I I hated was probably the Blitzball. Oh yeah, fuck the Blitzball. And then music. the Chocobo music I hated because of the Chocobo race though. I turn off the sound. You have to, or you lose your mind. <laughs> uh, I like the battle music for the first time in forever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I I really like the battle music. I love the area music. Besaid has a cool kind of feel to it. I feel like uh, Nobuo Uematsu, I think he, he used some techno stuff, but he really kept it, um, he really kept it kind of mild. As far as that was, yeah, concerned. he didn't. It wasn't like these big booming sounds, yeah. like in Seven with the, you know, like the Cosmo Canyon theme right. or the. There's numerous ones in there where it's like huge pieces, but this one it's more, more like how Twelve feels. Like it's just an atmospheric. Uh, I, I disagree with the. I I think the soundtrack is turned down where it, it's not really gonna, be as, in your face. However, I think each piece is pretty melodic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I don't I don't agree with you. I don't think I don't think it is like twelve's atmospheric feel. Oh, uh, it's better, but yeah. <laughs> I think it I think it is better. Um but gosh, there's some gorgeous gorgeous pieces in this game. I, I really love every time you're about to go into a Seymour fight, whatever tune plays there, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh already mentioned to Xanarkin, the Besaid area theme is, is gorgeous and I don't know. I just loved it all. I think he used a lot of like woodwind instruments, I would say, or like flutes and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, to uh, to kind of enhance the Islander score to it, because you know, like flutes <laughs> somehow make you think Islander. I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Seymour, the final Seymour fight music was I thought was cool. Uh, the heavy metal used. Uh, is appreciated <laughs> yeah <laughs> for jets uh jets fight and also was used in the beginning too yeah i thought that was pretty sweet that made his fight really awesome mm-hmm. and the battle music i thought was really good too but it did get old after well it's only after you've played it for so long yeah like, like me and you did uh, yeah especially that's... you <laughs> That's when it gets old, but I I do think the soundtrack was pretty solid. Yeah, soundtrack is great. Of course, uh, composed by <sighs> Nobuo Uematsu, uh, his second to last Final Fantasy. Yes, we're about to get to uh, Final Fantasy XI, which is going to be his last one that he scored, and he only scored the areas that are like the main parts of eleven. He didn't score. Oh, yeah. the, he didn't score the expansions, things that are only for the expansions. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so he was already gone by then, huh? Yep. So yeah, uh, it's gonna be a sad day. It's sad true. Day. The music it really isn't as good after. No. After well, 15s is amazing right now. Yeah, so far, yeah, it's yeah. been pretty good. But I don't know, 12, 12 13, 13s, yeah, they're kind of. I don't remember. 14s is uh, unmemorable as of right now. Yeah. Yeah. Even though that that composer guy, I do like some of his stuff that he that he showed us. He, yeah, we just have to play his more. Name, of it. But yeah, we'll have to play more at fourteen. But uh, yeah, yeah, this this game has some really good pieces, and I'd say it's it's definitely up there with the best soundtracks of yeah. Final Fantasy main series games. I would agree with that. Very solid. All right, so we got one more question here about the. Uh, legacy of this game which we'll get to and then our final ranking <sighs> after two months of playing final fantasy 10 it all comes down to this yeah <laughs> this question is from Bandrum. although i am not new to the genre i thought uh this would be a re- relevant question uh what advice would you give someone 
who was a budding gamer who just randomly bought this game, Final Fantasy X, uh, when it came out, when it comes out for this for for the PS4. Uh, maybe they know that it's the tenth entry in an epic series. Maybe they think it's called Final Fantasy X and have no idea what Roman numerals are. Either way, what would you tell someone who is picking up this game and has never played it or another Final Fantasy? Advice? Warnings? Uh, advice? Um, know that it's a PS2 game. Yeah, don't think it's a PS4 game. Right. And you're going to have to get past a few things, especially the first time you play it, uh, when it comes to Titus and his annoying voice mm -hmm. and just the weirdness of it. But I don't know. I think even as a normal gamer, you can come to appreciate the story and you can come to appreciate the gameplay and music. Mm -hmm. So I think if you've never played a turn-based RPG, I mean, this is going to be an interesting go around for you. Uh, but I think yeah, most people like this game when they're done with it. So I'm sure they'll, they'll, be fine with it. They just got to stick to it. Stick with the story. And that would be the warning is if, if you get stuck, just grind. <laughs> just uh, grind until you understand it better. I, I think guess. it's a great game for anyone who hasn't played Final Fantasy to start on. I really do. Uh, it's difficulty level is not sick like the early Final Fantasy games. Uh, although it is challenging enough, um, depending on where you are and how you play. Yeah, to, it can uh, be. To, you know, keep the game fun uh and the story is just uh it's so solid that uh i yeah i definitely suggested you know voice acting aside yeah and get right. past some of the art shit that we had to get past it's not it, it's Character ridiculous design. yeah, yeah. It's but you know it's fine yeah you'll make it through so caleb how do you feel the game has aged what is its legacy uh in the what has it has it been what, 13 years since this game was released? Uh, yeah, a little over 13. I think its legacy is pretty solid. I think it's one of the one of the most appreciated entries into the series. I feel like it's a decent place to start. I mean, I don't know about the best place. I think 7 might be better, or 6 even, to, as far as starting the series up. If this okay. was your first Final Fantasy, I mm -hmm. wouldn't say 1, because I would want you to play other ones, but... <laughs> I I think this would be a solid place to start. And I I think it's because there's, you know, stuff for more modern gamers, the voice acting, the better graphics, the speed of the battle system. The it's speed. not going to it's not going to make you go like, "Oh god, hurry up," like in Final Fantasy 9 or Yeah. Something. The limit breaks are interactive. They it's it's a good game. I I would say its legacy is still strong and mm -hmm. it's And if you if you enjoyed if you started on Final Fantasy 13, this is like the step up. Yeah, this is like... Because <laughs> Final Fantasy Thirteen is kind of a weak Final Fantasy X, as far as what I can remember. Yeah. I'm not going to judge it yet. Right. Um, and it, it was made by the same team, so it all kind of makes sense. <laughs> but if you were okay with the linearity of Thirteen, um, and you liked the, the fast combat or whatever, and you loved the amount of story and cutscenes there were in Thirteen. You know, this one has a f two hours worth <laughs> more of cutscenes than 13 does, apparently. Um, uh, it's definitely the game to go to next. Yeah. Because if you like 13, this will probably be your favorite game. <laughs> yeah, and it was the second Final Fantasy that I beat. So It was the first one I beat. It wasn't the first one I played. I think it was like the third one I started playing, but it was the first one I beat. And, nice. Uh, it left an impact on me. Uh, I, I this game is, is a really... Really good one. I, I, you know, you often see on, on lists of top 100 games of all time, this one usually shows up. Yeah. Uh, and and I think it, uh, I think it deserves it. It's one of the three that always show up. There's always six, seven, and ten. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think its legacy has been well kept, especially with the HD version, kind of bringing people back to the game. Yeah. And people, I mean, bringing people back to the series. Yeah, I would say so. And I mean, it's kind of fun having trophies thrown in there, especially because it's an HD. Remaster. I mean, there's stuff that there wasn't in the original game. So now there's a trophy for it. So you're like, oh, Dark Aeons, huh? Let's go find those. And then you're like, oh my God, I, uh, I can't hit them. You know, so it does have... I made a mistake. Yeah, it does have the ongoing legacy of, you know, the international version coming to the States in a PS3 upgrade. And it does look better. It looks pretty good. 
Like the Blitz Ball looks fantastic. I know that's something silly, but in the PS2 one, it looks like a giant 20 sided die, you know? And this one, it has, yeah, you know, it looks perfect. It, it looks really good. Yeah. Can you get me onto the forum on there? Yeah, this one's Zach. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Wow. Such a, such a fantastic game. And, and we got some second opinion here. Uh, I think, what, what, what area was that in? You remember? Uh, it was. The FF10 uh, area. Sorry, guys. We're trying to find out where, where everything is. All right. Game discussion on our forum. Two Final Fantasy X. And uh, let's see. Reviews. All right. So can you press the control button on the keyboard there, Caleb? So we can uh, pull this in. Oh, okay. That's good. All right. So you got a couple reviews here. One from Shinru, of course, and another one from Crimson Command on our forum. Uh, we want to thank those who asked questions for Final Fantasy X. I think we got to them all, but if we didn't, we'll answer them next time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out, I'm sure, uh, which ones we didn't uh, answer, uh, even though I, I thought I copied and pasted them all uh, to where I could see it. Okay, so Shinru says, I like FF10, and I'm glad that people... I'm glad... People that never played it have the chance to play the HD versions now. First, there are some things I really joy enjoyed about the game. Pros. Titus is hilarious. He's probably the first main FF character that is supposed to be you, in quotes, the FF player that's a fan and also a little bit awkward and funny like the average person. Just like you would, he is... Just like you would be. He is transported to another world and reacts strangely to everything he sees, similar to how you, the player, would act in the same situation. Yuna is a great character, and some might argue even be the real main character of FF10. Uh, and Titus is more like a supporting character. The rest of the cast is great too, and each offers a unique personality to the game. Music is great, and even though Uematsu was only like 50% involved with the songs, there were two other, there were two other guys working with him. Uh two other guys working with him you can still feel the charm of the ff music in this game okay yeah so special thanks to those two other guys that we, we didn't talk about at all uh <laughs> i like the unique locations you visit and it adds a nice pilgrimage feel to the game as you keep on tra traveling through areas to new locations i like how the game balances hilarious goofy moments with serious and emotional moments i think they did a good job uh, summons are cool, and Anima is awesome, as well as Yojimbo. The various Seymour fights and Unaleska fights were the best ones in the game. The romance between Titus and Yuna was great. I agree. Yes. Uh, the ending to FF10 is up there with the other great ones in the series. The story was really good. Nice amount of bonus content and optional stuff. All right, so he does have a con section here as well. He says, FF10, in his opinion, started the really linear path FF trend. You can clearly tell that FF13 is basically FF10 2.0 yep. and that it approved upon the linear elements that FF10 introduced. I'm fine with some FF games trying something new and being linear, so I'm not one of those haters, but I do agree that both share many similarities and that they both have a set linear path all the way to basically the end of the game where it opens up and you can finally explore and backtrack. Most areas are still very linear, though with just a straightforward point A to B setup, that's true. They didn't try to mask it like older FFs, like they did in 7 with Midgar and FF9, where you had a linear path, but an impression that you had a huge area to explore. That is true. 9 did do a good job of that. Still very linear, though, if you're looking for it. I don't think it's much of a trend, though. Not really. Uh, I think, yeah, 9 is super linear. Uh, but 11 and 12 are in between 10 and 13. It's not like 10 on is yeah, all Yeah, 12 linear. is not linear. It's just 10 and 13 that are super linear. Yeah, and it's the same team. We just talked about that. Yeah. So they, that's how they know how to tell a story, so that's what they did when they came to 13. Yeah. They forced you to do the story. <laughs> I never got over that we couldn't fly the airship around the world. I agree. It sucks. Now that is a trend. <laughs> yes. <FF> <laughs> that one they kept. <laughs> yeah, they did. FF10, I think, is the first in the series that to really be easy, and they did this to appeal to a new demographic of PS2 owners and kids that never played FF before. I'm okay with it, but I do think the game is way too handholdy at times. They really try to teach you that Titus attacks are good for certain enemies, Lulu magic for other enemies, Waka for aerial enemies, Auron for strong armored enemies, etc. Then each battle is a neat set of three monsters of different types, and that's how most battles are. 
for the beginning of the game. Attack with Titus, Waka, and Lulu. Repeat for every enemy. It's okay, but I like the older FF method where you can still hit and kill other enemies early in the game with other characters, and it wouldn't say zero damage or miss. Battles drag on a bit in the early parts of the game when only one person in a party of three can attack an aerial enemy. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Equipment and weapons. They really simplified this, too, to the point where it was too simple. One weapon and one piece of equipment. Each character can only use weapons designed for their class, which is okay, but the whole equipment setup, I felt, could have been improved. I prefer being able to equip helmets, armor, braces, etc., like in the old FF games. And FF10 really changed the formula, and even FF13 slightly improved this and allowed you to, to equip two pieces of equipment and one weapon. Final dungeon and final boss. I would like to boss. say something about that, uh, that weapon thing. He says it's too simple, but with the customization of the weapons, I don't think it is that simple. Um, Really. I, I think he's saying it's simple because you don't have to keep buying like 10 equipment yeah, items. Yeah, like that's true. Ones. There are less equipment items in Final Fantasy 9. Final Fantasy 8, uh, I think that was just a weapon that you can equip in Final Fantasy 8. That was it. Yeah. And you had to get the pieces. And get in 7, you had... Things. One weapon, one armor piece. Right. And you put, yeah. So it's the same. It's the same. So I, I, it's less than nine, but I don't necessarily think, I mean, even with the customization It's pretty in-depth. It, it's, there's a lot you can do with those weapons. And I, I, don't, and really, I don't really like wasting time buying brand new stuff every time I come to a town I get, either. Yeah. That does get old. That's one of those things I don't really miss from the old games. Yeah. So I, I kind of disagree with you there, man, yeah. but... That's fine. I mean, if that's what you what you like, if you like spending time buying items, that's it's okay. Um, Final Fantasy fifteen apparently is gonna have four, uh, five swords for you to have five sword slots. So, lots of equipment options there. That's right. <laughs> All right. So he says final dungeon and final boss was disappointing. Worst mini games in a main series FF game. Period. I could do the broken chocobo race and butterfly catching, but seriously, that lightning dodging was created by sadists. You could do the chocobo race and not the lightning dodging? What What the fuck? <laughs> Maybe he didn't know about the spot. Maybe. That isn't fun. That isn't what should be in a game. Who the hell came up with that <laughs> or thought, hey, this is a great idea? I don't know. That's a great question. That is. They're, there are they're points. Really shitty. <laughs> yeah. There are points when a game no longer is a game, and this is a perfect example. Not fun and no longer enjoyable. Overall, FF10 gets an 8.5 out of 10. And his ranking is FF7, FF5, FF9, FF6, FF10, 3, 1, 4, 8, and 2. Wow. Eight hater. <laughs> yeah, that's essentially how mine looks, except for 3 and 1 are not that high. Mine and yours look really similar. I know. I'm getting concerned. I think you're just copying my answers. It's like, I start out some of them. It's been like off and on. Who starts it? Your turn this time, though. All right. This is Crimson Command, uh, his review of FF10. Yeah, he says, I agree pretty much all of what Shinru mentioned. I do want to add a few things. I think we finally see a continuation of a main character shift. 9 and 10 have a very cheery and goofy main character that brings a nice change to the broody 7 and 8. I think is a little bit broody too. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Not there's as much a, as there Celis, are a lot. There are I mean. a lot if, I, if you were to compare Titus to any other main character, he would be closest to Zidane or Bartz. Easily, yeah. yeah. Bartz was pretty cheery. Yeah. I mean, considering the shit that was happening like, at the end of the I game. I feel like sometimes five is forgotten. That's true. <laughs> I think they did an excellent job with the creature design, and I think the idea of an evolution-based system like what we have in our own universe was very obvious. I know some say it was lazy, but I think it added a character to each area in that a certain type of creature adapted to the specific area. Mm, I get what he's saying. The, the, they use a lot of creatures that are related to each other, but slightly different designs. Yeah, like the ice area, they'd be yeah. ice monsters. It does so. seem like they cut and paste a lot of enemies, but, you know, I, I yeah, the, the evolution thing, I think, is what they were going for. Yeah, I think or so, too. Or to save space. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> I didn't mind so much the linearity until it got to the airship. Yuna is one of my favorite female characters alongside Beatrix and Ash. She has a charm to her that I felt was kind of lost in 10-2. Very much agreed. 
It had one of the best endings in Final Fantasy that I think was also diminished by Ten Two. Also agreed. I can't understand the ending of Ten is so perfect. Why would you put a sequel on it? I don't know. Don't get me wrong. Ten Two was a good game as far as games, but I think it did. I uh, don't think it did much to the Ten universe, to be honest. The Sphere Grid is one of my favorite leveling systems. I enjoy evolution-based ideas and where things can be altered by something. I think it could work better, but that may be why I enjoyed the idea of two systems. Everybody likes the idea of two systems. Yeah. (laughs) The areas were unique to hold my attention, but I think 12 did it much better. Mm, I think 12... 12 felt more copy copy and paste. Yeah, there were some areas where it was like the same thing over and over and over and over again. I think 10... I think 10 did a really good job of making each area unique. I think 12... I felt like 12 was 90% a step climate. Yeah. 12 <laughs> had some really good looking areas. I'd say better looking than 10s, but that's because the graphics are better and they had more capacity. But yeah, I agree with you. It's like foothills and like... Eh. Shrubbery. Shrubbery, yeah. <laughs> a little dry. A little wet or really wet sometimes. Yeah. If you come back in an hour, it'll be raining. That part was pretty cool, though. I did enjoy that in 12. Yeah. All right, so he says, 10 had a lot of problems as well, though. The airship was pretty much useless, although it did have a more significant story plot than others. The map never seemed to really open up like it did in previous games because of the linearity. Although Jet was awesome in design, the fight didn't have much me, didn't have me on the edge of my seat like Necron did. That's that's true. <laughs> Necron's fucking hard. Yeah, the design to the weapons and armor was pathetically dull. They only had five designs for each. Although the idea of placing abilities on equipments was cool, it wasn't exactly the best. I think 9 did it better with ability slots. There were a lot of awkward moments that were made much more awkward with the uh, voice acting. Like Shinru, the minigames. I forgive 10 for the voice acting. I really do. Yeah, I got over it. The voice actors are not bad at doing their jobs. Just the timing is so weird. Yeah. Like Shinru, the minigames and side quests were not interesting or fun, really, and diminished the enjoyment of the game. I thought 10 was a great exploration. This isn't me. This is still me. I thought 10 was a great exploration in what the games could become, and I give it a 8 out of 10 overall. It is a game that I have been craving to play once again, but cannot at the present time. So thank you for those who left reviews. Crimson Command and Shinru. Uh, Schweiss. You first. Overall, no... Let's do it before the rankings. Oh, okay. Overall. Overall, as a giant recap, your impressions of the game. I think it's a must-play in the series. Mm-hmm. I think it would easily be the top five out of probably the best, most solid games. And I feel like if you haven't played this game and you're listening to us, play this game. Like yeah, honestly, we spoiled everything in the story section. It's true. It's ruined. <laughs> It's fantastic. Uh, you know, I know there's parts where it seems cheesy and it seems ridiculous in the design, but it is well worth your time. You will not be disappointed by the end. I thought I felt like it was a pretty solid entry in the series. Mm-hmm. What about you? I thought the story was almost perfect. I love the story of Final Fantasy X. Uh, if if a ending of a game can move me emotionally, I think that's really the sign of a story that works. Yeah. It works really well. And I'm surprised it's the same writer as Final Fantasy VIII. But (laughs) he did a really good job in this one. He learned what not to do. He's like M. Night Shyamalan. But the opposite. sense. Only, yeah, the opposite. Where he's (laughs) shitty first. And then good. (laughs) Then good for at least ten. Yeah. Um, I thought the story, yeah, was almost perfect. The gameplay was the perfect speed. Sure, side quests and all that were not... Uh, not necessarily great. They were kind of grinding, uh, and some of some of the challenges, as Shinru said, the lightning and the chocobo race, complete bullshit. <laughs> they're they're atrocious and they're not fun. Uh, they're not a challenge in a fun way. They're just like, okay, here, spend thirty minutes of your time doing something you absolutely hate. Yeah. So that's that's something I I don't like, but you don't. They're not required parts of the game. The re- required parts of the game were the uh, the battle system and the story. And uh, I thought those were both amazingly solid. I like the leveling. I mean, I think I still prefer regular 
level up systems. Yeah. Just because they don't take as much time to do. Um, but I do like the customization aspect of it. That's for sure. And it almost brought the job system back in, in a way. Yeah, I did. I felt that uh, way too. I like most of the characters. I mean, besides Riku. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Kimari really added too much to it, although uh, I liked his story. I liked his story. Yeah, more than Riku's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I liked the music very much. Uh, it's not one of the soundtracks that I would listen to by itself too often, but remixes of the soundtracks are pretty cool. Yeah. Final Fantasy X soundtracks, there's some good stuff out there. Um, except with with the exception of Tuzanarkin, which I think is it's my favorite piece in the series. Uh Design wise, although yeah, I hate the character design. As we talked about, the world is beautiful and uh, it's really a cool place to escape to. Overall, I, I agree with you. I think it is a must play of the series. Um, if I, I think people really should start with Final Fantasy X. I think it's a solid place. It's not too out there, outside of the character design, to where it might ward off those who are you know I don't know put off by that by the whole Japanese aspect to it feel like it's fun enough and quick enough that it's a good place to start and okay. to appreciate the ones before it <laughs> all right here it is worst to best worst to best yeah i'll give you time to think no actually you... oh no 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 best to worst <laughs> okay, best fine. to worst it's easier that way oh man this has been the i've been thinking about this for days schweiss yeah days and this was the previous uh, ranking for the games overall from what we've played for this podcast. My previous ranking was the best game in the series, Final Fantasy VI, followed by 7, 9, 5, 8, 4, 2, 3, and then number 1 as the worst. It's the least enjoyable for me was number 1. <laughs> I like 2's story, and I like 3's gameplay. Number 1 just... <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> a lot of people, you know, they they disagree. It's a with classic us. thing. You know, I, I get it. I just uh, no. Get it? Just don't agree. <laughs> now the real thing, the real problem I had with this one is that I know still that six is still the best game. I think I really think it's the best in the series. Okay. Gameplay, it's super solid. Story is beautiful and amazing and every character is interesting and, and the music is epic and yeah, the music and the design there's there's six is uh, as far as i can tell is one of the greatest games of all time uh, the, admittedly there hasn't been that much time <laughs> true true it's not like saying the greatest musical piece of all time like that's a real fucking statement <laughs> yeah yeah but uh you know as far as this short history of gaming is concerned i think six is is up there as okay. far as I know, and most most people and reviews that I've seen agree, six really is the best. Um, now, is ten better than seven? Is the question. And with this, <laughs> you're kind of grasping at straws. You're looking for things to hate. Like what? What has the most things that I don't like? It's it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, should I make fun of Seven's Popeye uh, design of its characters? Or should I talk about Final Fantasy X's ridiculous design of its characters? Well, there's no they excuse. They both have incredible <laughs> stories, although Riku doesn't make any sense in the, in the context of Final Fantasy X. And then Final Fantasy VII, it, uh, for me, all the stuff kind of having to do with Shinra was distracting to the main part of the story, the you know cloud versus sephiroth <laughs> mm -hmm. uh and of course clouds past and all that stuff was so much more interesting than hojo showing up every 10 minutes or the or the turks i felt like they were not necessarily the, the part of the story that i was really interested in I felt like it was distracting from there uh but not enough that it, it really bugged me but yeah i'm i'm, I'm grasping for grasping for straws you know mm -hmm. Final Fantasy X's voice acting is uh, it has its moments, but it also has its downfalls. But Seven doesn't have voice acting. Sh should I really judge the voice acting against no voice acting at all? 
that, that's that's something I, I'm not sure about. Uh, yikes. That's what I say. Uh, 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 Shwise, help me out here. Which one's better? Which is seven or ten, you know? Uh, oh, they're so close in my mind, though. It's like ten is just above them, but or six is just above them, but ten and seven are just... They're hand in hand. They're <laughs> not hand in hand, but they're like... Neck head to neck. head, head to head. Oh, I'm still thinking. I never found an answer. So this is me trying to decide which game do uh, which game am I more real, willing to replay? It would be Final Fantasy X. Okay. Okay. So my ranking is now Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 9, 5, 8, 4, 2, 3, and 1. Okay. Schweiss? Um. What's your ranking now? You know, I really, I really thought 10 was going to be a struggle, and it is. It's a struggle to place it. But it's not better than 6. And since I have 7 above 6, it's not better than 7. But it is better than 9. So my ranking is going to be 7, 6, 10, 9, 5, 8, 4, 2, 3, and 1. That was tough. Yeah, 10 was pretty good, but honestly, there are a lot of parts in it that did bother me. And more so than 7. And 6, I almost feel ashamed to have 7 above 6 because you're right about 7. And six. Six has no problems, as far as I recall, except for the glitchiness of it, obviously. <laughs> but that's a great problem. <laughs> it's it a is, very useful problem. Yeah, there. it's extremely solid. I had very few problems with it. There's the quirky, weird shit that happens in these other two that not as appealing. But seven's bad guy, seven's story, I think, was better than six still. So I would still play seven as number one. Okay. Barely. And then six... It's those it's those top three games. They are the three best games in the series, I would say, so far. It's not fair to judge them all because I haven't beaten 13, even though there's no fucking way it's going to be better than <laughs> 7 or 6. I'll give it a chance to be so. Okay. That was tough, though. I, I honestly, I didn't know where tough. I was going to put it. I was like, you know, part of me wants to put it as the favorite, but does it really deserve the favorite? And then I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's rough. I I'm still struggling with it. I'm still struggling with my answer. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Oh man. Well, guys, make sure you join us in Final Fantasy XI's playthrough. Yes. We're going to finish at least the Bastok missions. Although we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how far we can get. I mean, yeah. we do have our two-month time frame. Obviously, it's subject to change because we do what we want around here. But, <laughs> you know, it's we'll, we'll see how far we can get. Mm -hmm. The more, the merrier. And the more, the more we get done. Right. And uh, if, you want the, if you want the episodes a day early, or, and may I say, if you got this episode uh, a week early... Uh, make sure you support us on Patreon. Yeah, all we ask for is a dollar a month. Yeah, a dollar a month. That's 25 cents an episode, man. That is nothing. <laughs> it, it really is nothing. And, and we don't even get all 25 believe cents. Believe me, Patreon is a safe site. So any of you guys kind of like going, you know, iffy about it, really, there's no problems with Patreon. It's it's, it's big, yeah. It's solid. And right? any any sort of fees they take out on our end, so you guys aren't paying anything extra, it's just flat amounts, whatever you guys mm -hmm. whatever you guys mm -hmm. pledge. So. And it's per month. It's not like per episode. We're not going to abuse you by putting out 10 episodes. Yeah, I mean, that would be <laughs> awesome. We just switch it overnight and like throw out like 10 <laughs> commentaries and just bask. <laughs> 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 and I thought about we it. We would never do that. Of course, we no, no. We would never do that. I would only think about it. Don't say that over the air. <laughs> now they're going to be like, they're totally going to do it. <laughs> no, we wouldn't do that. And then, of course, uh, check us out on, you know, on Twitter. We, I, I'm pretty active on there. I like to retweet a lot of cool mm -hmm. stuff, imagery, music, mm -hmm. quotes, whatever. At UFF podcast. Yes. 
Uh, Twitch is now Ultima Final Fantasy. Yes. No spaces. No spaces. And I'll be right. I'll be starting out with that Final Fantasy XI. Well, a week from when you get this episode. Yeah, probably. I don't. <laughs> well, when you get this episode, a week prior to. So yes. hopefully you already know. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, Final Fantasy X. It was fantastic. Yeah, and I mean, you, you put it the best way possible when you beat it. You said that was the last great Final Fantasy game. And that's exactly <laughs> how I felt, too. We'll see. We'll see. There's two Final Fantasy I have not beaten. And they're 11 and 14 in the main series. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see about uh, Final Fantasy XI's story. They're ending it soon. It's true. They're one last uh, hurrah of a yeah, you of know, an expansion. DLC. Yeah. A one last 400 wow. hour hurrah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> MMOs, man. Oh, wow. The yeah, still trying to get over this this whole thing. Oh yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, join our forums if you haven't already. Also, yeah, it's a small Ult- growing Ultima community. Ultimafinalfantasy or you can just go to ultimafinalfantasy.com Click on forums. There's a link there. Uh, just join. You can even be a guest. Just ask a question. We love doing the question segment when we have uh, when we have weeks to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, man, man, we're getting there. We're getting to the near the end of the series. Yeah, it's kind of near the end of the main series. Yeah, it's kind of surreal. I mean, there's, there's so many hours that we put into this, and it's like, man, it's getting kind of down to the wire. Unless you count. Except out. we're getting to the long games. Yeah, the now, really long games. Yes. So. Although this was this was long for me. <laughs> Long and hard. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. That's going to end it for this episode. We'll see you next week. Enjoy the grind. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show was produced by Joseph de Gaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph de Gaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show and look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.